First on Fox News was the headline today, Matt Gates introduces Somalia war powers resolution, forcing vote on removing armed forces. That's right. I want to bring our troops home from Somalia. So in Congress, a war powers resolution is a privileged motion. And privileged motions were restored under the House Rules Package that I and a handful of other Republicans demanded as a feature of allowing Kevin McCarthy to ascend to the speakership. So the whole reason we're able to do this is because we're actually back to empowering the members. This means that the resolution on whether to withdraw U.S. troops from Somalia will skip committee and be brought to the House floor within 18 legislative days. That is how my legislation to withdraw troops from Syria was able to make it to the floor so quickly as well. You notice a trend. I am going to make these neocons in both parties vote to defend each and every place where we have troops, where we should not, where the goals are unclear, and where we are largely wasting the efforts of our military families and our service members, not because of anything they're doing wrong, but because the decision makers in Washington have far too often just delegated authority to the executive to decide where we engage in these misadventures and skirmishes all over the world. So why Somalia now? Well, the situation in Somalia is actually quite familiar. It's one more front in the globalist American empire's lineup of forever wars. For the past 16 years, think about that. 16 years in Somalia, but for a little break with President Trump, but I'll get to that. So for 16 years, the United States has been involved in an advise and assist mission in Somalia. And throughout the mission that we've carried out, we've seen numerous operations and airstrikes within the country. Staying on brand for the warmongers of our time, former President Barack Obama utilized the 2001 authorization for force against Afghanistan to target al-Shabaab in Somalia. These strikes have been quietly conducted under the nose of the American public. By August 2022, a civilian harm watchdog group estimated that between 78 and 153 civilians had been killed by U.S. airstrikes in Somalia since 2007. It includes 20 to 23 children. The problem is, even under the best of intentions and the most focused of work of our brave service members, when we are killing civilians, we are not fighting terrorism we are creating more terrorists. I, I noticed there's some disagreement with my perspective on Somalia uh, on Facebook. Jeffrey said, well, there's ISIS in Somalia, so we have to be there. But the reality is, it's really an unsettled question whether or not us being there creates a downward pressure on terrorism or whether it is a recruiting tool for more terrorists. The hundreds of people we may have killed in Somalia who are innocent probably had family members, and I certainly hope we didn't radicalize those through misadventures. So sadly, our country's involvement in this war-torn country is not new. The lives of our troops have been carelessly gambled in Somalia for close to 30 years now, actually. So let's start from the beginning. If the average person heard the term, the Battle of Mogadishu, it might conjure up images of warring nomadic tribes throwing spears at each other. But if you say Black Hawk Down, then people likely will know what you're talking about. In 1992, U.S. soldiers were tasked with restoring order in Somalia during one of the many seemingly ongoing endless Somali civil wars. The Battle of Mogadishu, also known as the Black Hawk Down Incident, was a U.S. military operation that took place there on October 3, 1993. The mission was to capture two top lieutenants for some warlord, Mohammed Farah Adid. The troops, including Army Rangers and Delta Force operators, were attacked by Adid's militia and other Somali fighters during their mission. This resulted in the deaths of, eight, of 18 U.S. soldiers. Two Black Hawk helicopters were shot down by rocket-propelled grenades in the attack, and an American pilot was captured and publicly executed. It seems we may not have learned from the past. The U.S. military war machine continues to throw troops and money into dangerous situations for unclear gain. I'm all about using our military to protect our country, but do we really fear some activity in Somalia as a threat to our homeland? If you think that was long ago, let's return to the present. 
Those who subscribe to Firebrand and, in fact, have notifications turned on, which you should all do, were the first to know last week that the House Armed Services Committee invited General Michael Langley, the commander of U.S. forces in Africa, to testify on, quote, the U.S. military posture and national security challenges in the greater Middle East and Africa, close quote. Among others, I asked a simple question. What percentage of African soldiers trained by the U.S. military have later led coups against their own governments? Because Colonel Mamadé Dumbuya, pictured here at a U.S. embassy posing with our service members, led a coup in Guinea in 2001, just months after this photo was taken. He was, in fact, trained by the U.S. military. But General Langley had no clue who Colonel Dumbuya was when I showed him that photo. Colonel Dumbuya runs the country now. So you would think that the commander of AFRICOM would know that Dumbuya was in charge of the country, that he's there because he was trained by America and led a military coup, and that we were involved. So take a listen to my line of questioning here. This is uh, Colonel Mamadé Dumbuya, and this is a photo of, of him. Did we train and equip him? In Guinea? Uh, by name, I, I cannot identify that. Well, well, that guy in the middle with the big red hat, Colonel Mamadé Dumbuya, that, that's him with a bunch of U.S. service members outside of our embassy. And just months after this photo was taken, in 2021, he led a coup in Guinea and, and threw out the, the leader. Does that concern you? Congressman, core values is what we start off with in IMA pro programs. Do we, we share core values with Colonel Dumbuya? Core values. I will repeat that. Core values. Know, respect for humanity. Do we, do we share those values with Colonel Dumbuya? Absolutely. In our, in our curriculum. He led a coup. We do. Okay, well, I, I, that's a very telling answer. Telling indeed. Citizen D on Getter asks why there is no oversight into these missions. And frankly, the limited time we get to question these generals is part of the oversight structure. Also, what we authorize, what we spend money on, and the wars that we authorize. And so to me, forcing a vote on Somalia is central to the oversight strategy because if people don't vote for or against each of these individual conflicts, they're not necessarily vested in the risks associated with them. At times, I feel like I have to remind listeners, that was a four-star general you just heard, hired by Joe Biden. Go figure. The American people have extremely low confidence in our military leaders and their ability to assess their own efficacy. How do they expect Americans to believe their justification for occupying Somalia when they can't even determine who in their own training programs will lead a violent coup afterwards? Seems like a pretty baseline thing. 